We've previously discussed the orthogonal projection of one vector onto another. It would look something like this. Here's a vector u, here's a vector v, and we could consider the orthogonal projection of u on to the vector v, which is like the component of u that goes in the direction of v, or we could think of it like u's shadow cast on v. Now if this vector we are projecting on is v, we could also consider the subspace made up of the scalar multiples of v, which is just a line, and then we could think of this red vector as the projection of u onto a subspace. Now that we also understand the idea of an orthogonal complement, we're prepared to discuss the projections of vectors onto subspaces in general. Here's the key theorem, which we may call the projection theorem. If W is a finite dimensional subspace of an inner product space V, then every vector U in V can be expressed in exactly one way as w1 plus w2, where w1 is from the subspace w, and w2 is from the orthogonal complement of w. Thus, in essence, we split the vector from the inner product space u into two components, its component that's in the subspace w, and its component that is orthogonal to the subspace w, as in its in the orthogonal complement. This is the notation we use, which should be familiar. This is the projection of u on the subspace w. This is the projection of u on the orthogonal complement of w. Again, just writing out the wording, this is called the orthogonal projection of u on w, and this is called the orthogonal projection of u on the orthogonal complement of w. But keep in mind, we sometimes read that as w perp. So it's the orthogonal projection of u on w perp. Or we could also say that it is the component of u, which is orthogonal to the subspace w. Here's a picture of what's going on in R cubed. The idea is if we have this subspace w, which is just a plane in three-dimensional space, and we have this vector u, we could consider the orthogonal projection of u onto the plane, and then we could also consider the component of u, which is orthogonal to the plane. And notice how the component of u that is orthogonal to the plane lies on the orthogonal complement, which is this subspace that's orthogonal to w. Now, given this notation for w1 and w2, the vectors that we're splitting u into, we could write that u equals its projection on w plus its component orthogonal to w. Or, since the component of u orthogonal to w is just u minus its component on w, we could also write it like this, u equals the projection onto w plus u minus the projection of u onto w. Remember, if we subtract the projection of u onto w from u, we get the component of u that is orthogonal to w. Now we'll take a look at this theorem telling us how to calculate orthogonal projections, then we'll prove it, and then we'll do an example. So this theorem tells us how to find the projection of a vector onto a subspace given that we have an orthogonal basis, or an orthonormal basis. Let w be a finite dimensional subspace of an inner product space v. If this set is an orthogonal basis for w, and u is some vector from the inner product space v, then the projection of u on w is calculated like this. You may recognize this as the formula we use to express a vector in an inner product space as a linear combination of orthogonal basis vectors. Now, if our vector u happens to be a member of w, then that's exactly what it is. This is just telling us how to write the vector u in terms of the orthogonal basis vectors. But in the more likely case that u is not an element of w, then rather than this just being u, it is specifically the projection of u on w, which is, of course, different. Each one of these terms you may recognize as a projection of u onto a particular basis vector. This is the projection of u on v1, this is the projection of u on v2, and so on. In total, we get the projection of u on all the basis vectors, add them up, and that gives us the projection of u on the subspace that's spanned by those orthogonal basis vectors. 
In a picture, it looks like this. Here's our subspace W. It's a plane in R cubed. Our basis vectors are V1 and V2. The vector u is represented here as a point. We're just representing it as a point to cut down on the clutter in the picture. If we project u onto the basis vector v1, it looks like that. If we project u on the basis vector v2, we get that. Now the sum of those projections on the basis vectors gives us this, the projection of u onto the plane, the projection of u onto that subspace. Again, we'd often think of this as the shadow cast by u down onto that subspace. We also have this formula for the projection of u onto the subspace w in the case where the basis vectors are orthonormal. In this case, all of those norms from the first formula are equal to 1, and so their squares are 1 as well, and so we don't need to write the denominators, and we just have a product of inner products and basis vectors. Now we'll walk through the proof of this theorem. I want to point out that the theorem only tells us how to calculate the projection of u on the subspace w, not the component of u that's orthogonal to w. That's because once we have the projection of u on w, we just subtract that from u to get the component that is orthogonal to w. All right, let's look at this proof. So the idea is we have these orthogonal basis vectors v1 through vr for a subspace w of an inner product space v. We then take a vector u from the inner product space v. Now, we know from the projection theorem that we can write this vector as w1 plus w2, where w1 is the projection of u on the subspace w, and hence it's an element of that subspace, and w2 is the component of u that's orthogonal to w, hence it's an element of the orthogonal complement of w. Now, the fact that w1, which is the orthogonal projection of u on the subspace w, the fact that that's an element of the subspace w is important because that means we know that we can write w1, which is that orthogonal projection, as a linear combination of the basis vectors in w. And we proved in a previous video on orthogonal basis vectors that this is exactly how you construct such a linear combination. Each basis vector vi needs to be multiplied by the inner product of the vector in question with vi divided by the squared norm of vi. Now this looks very similar to the claimed formula in the theorem, but note that it is different. In the theorem, we're saying that this vector here is the vector u that we are projecting onto w. But right now, all we have in that inner product is w1. That's the part of u that we already know lies in the subspace w. But consider this. As we said before, the component of u orthogonal to w, that's w2, is an element of the orthogonal complement of w. This means that the inner product of w2 with any basis vector vi would have to be zero. Hence, if we were to add w2 into all of those inner products in the left slot, so now we have w1 plus w2, w1 plus w2, w1 plus w2, that actually wouldn't change anything. If you imagine actually doing these computations, by the additivity property, we could split this inner product into the inner product of w1 with v1, just like we had before, plus the inner product of w2 with v1 which we know to be zero. So that term we've added actually has not added anything at all. The same logic would apply to each term. This inner product here, we could split it up into w1 with v2, just like we had before, and w2 with v2, which we know to be zero. Again, that's because w2 is from the orthogonal complement of w, hence it's orthogonal to every vector in w. So if adding w2 in the first slot of those inner products doesn't change anything, why do it? Well, because now we see what the inner product really is. It's w1 plus w2, which is u. So even though the w2 didn't actually change the number, we see clearly that the inner product is actually u with v1 and u with v2, and so on, just as claimed in the theorem.
Walking through this proof in a nutshell, we decomposed U with the projection theorem into a component that's in W and a component that's orthogonal to W. Then we express the component that's in W as a linear combination of the orthogonal basis vectors using a previously proven theorem, link in the description, for writing a vector as a linear combination of orthogonal basis vectors. By then adding W2, which is from the orthogonal complement of W, in each of the first slots, we didn't actually change the value of the inner products because w2 with v1 and w2 with v2 and so on are all equal to zero. Then we were able to replace the w1 plus w2s in the inner products with u because u equals w1 plus w2, thus establishing the theorem. Part B is trivial. This was done with an orthogonal basis, and if the basis was orthonormal, all of these norms in the denominator would be one, and so we would have achieved part B there without those denominators. Let's do an example calculating projections. Let R cubed have the Euclidean inner product, and let W be the subspace of R cubed spanned by these orthonormal vectors. So this is a plane in R cubed. We could verify that these vectors are orthonormal. It's easy to see that their dot product is zero, and if we were to calculate their norms, we would have 25 over 169 plus 144 over 169, which is 169 over 169. Put that in a square root, it's root 1, and so the norm of V1 is certainly 1. And it's easy to see that the norm of V2 is 1 as well. So these are orthonormal basis vectors, hence we can apply part B of this previously proven theorem to calculate the projection of this vector U on the subspace W, and then use that to calculate the component of U that's orthogonal to W. To calculate the projection of U on W, we need to take each of the basis vectors, V1 and V2, and multiply each one by the inner product of U with that particular vector, U with V1, U with V2. Now the inner product here is just the dot product, so U with V1 is going to be 1 times 5 over 13, plus 1 times 0, plus 1 times 12 over 13, and that's getting multiplied by v1. The inner product, which is the dot product of u with v2, we can easily see is just 1. Now, actually doing the addition and distributing the scalar through v1, this scalar is 17 over 13, times 5 over 13 is 85 over 169 times 0 is 0, and 17 thirteenths times 12 thirteenths is 204 over 169. We then add 1 times v2, which of course is just that. Finally then, the projection of u on w is this vector here. We can take this vector and subtract it from u to get the component of u that's orthogonal to w. And that looks like this. So to find the component of u orthogonal to w, we subtract the projection of u on w from u. So we take that vector u, subtract the projection that we just found, and this is the vector we get. So w is a plane in R cubed. This projection of u on w is like the shadow of u cast on that plane w. And this vector here is the component of u that's orthogonal to w. Going back up to this picture of a similar situation, the component of u orthogonal to w, of course, looks like that. It's that vector there. So that's a look at vector projections and how we can project a vector onto a subspace of an inner product space. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my Linear Algebra course and Linear Algebra Exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about. Stressed out, honey, I've been stressed out lately. Don't know what's what, don't know what I'm stressed about. Stressed out, sweetie, I'm stressed out. Sounds like you've been stressed out. Tell me what you're stressed about.